Okay, so now the method of preparing your sample. And this is very crucial, okay? So we're gonna first prepare, we're gonna do our first nicotine sample, which has already been prepared one milligram per ml of nicotine, okay? Now in order to do that, we're gonna take one five, one five microliters of this sample. So we're gonna first transfer it into a beaker. And also the quinoline, which is our internal standard. So that's also going to be transferred into another beaker. We set our micropiper to 1.5 microliters. Pipe it out the nicotine sample. I put that into a micro centrifuge tube. Then we go to pipe at 15 microliters of quinoline, which was already prepared for us. Transfer that into the same micro centrifuge tube. Close the top. And vortex for a, about half a minute or 10 to 20 seconds or so. Once we are done vortexing, we can transfer that into another beaker. Before we fill it up into the vial, because we got to now filter the sample again to make sure it doesn't interfere with the GC column. To use again a 0.45 micron filter to transfer into the Wow. We should be able to transfer at least one ml so the syringe from the other sampler can pick up the sample without any problem. Before we start running the GC mass spec, we've always got to make sure that our carrier gas, which is helium, has enough pressure. So we want to make sure that there is enough pressure in the base in the tank and going to the instrument. Okay. Now this is the DC mass spec instrument. There are many components to it. The first part on the top is the auto sampler. If you see that over here. And we have put one of our liquidine samples out there. This is the injector port. It's automatic and you'll see that too. That's where the syringe is for the injector. The mass spectrometer is actually down here. So that's where the mass spec, at least that's the transfer from the GC column, which is on my right, to the mass spec, which is on this side. To show you how the GC column is placed, it's placed in, in an oven, and it's a capillary column, around 30 meters thin. So, one end of the column is going directly to the mass spec, the other end is attached to the injector port. To start our run, we first need to go to method, load method, and we load the nicotine method. Okay. While it is loading the method, we got to make sure that if it's saying not ready, that means we got to wait till everything is ready. The reason is because I just opened up the column. So the oven temperature is not yet ready, but in the, in the meantime, I can show you how our GC run is set up. So we go to instrument, GC parameters, and this is our run. So for two minutes, we are at 80 degrees Celsius, and then at a rate of 25 degrees Celsius per minute, we ramp up all the way to 245 degrees Celsius, and we hold that for another four and a half minutes. So that is our temperature program for the oven and that's what's going to help us separate out nicotine and quinoline at least for our standard and for our sample it will be nicotine, quinoline and any other components which are there in the e-cigarette. Okay so once our temperature has reached the right temperature and the system is ready to go we got to go to sequence, load sequence 
and we load our sequence okay which is obviously going to be nicotine now we got a sequence edit sequence and here we can see what all is part of the sequence in our case we have the method file the data the data file where it's going to store the data and so forth and finally we got to go to the sequence run sequence and we got to click on run sequence so that's when it starts getting things ready to run okay i got to pan over now to the other sampler because that's when we are interested to see so how how the sample is injected into the gc Rinse the different solvents, and now it's rinsing the sample before it's going to inject. That's it. It has injected the sample. We have a three-minute delay before the samples come out. Okay? This is to make sure that. the mass spec is not overloaded with the solvent so only after 3 minutes will we be able to see anything that's coming out from the gc pump also if you notice over here we have a bunch of different small boxes each of those boxes are for different mass or m by z values which will confirm nicotine or quinoline okay Uh, that's all there in the research paper which was provided to you and i can explain that also during the uh, lecture but a total run time for this experiment is around 13 minutes we'll just wait to see the peaks coming out for quinoline and for nicotine and there we will see the peaks are starting to come out after 3 minutes So this will run, and just like any chromatogram, it will give us peaks for each sample. Right now, I know it looks like there's a lot of peaks out there. The TIC stands for Total Ion Chromatogram, and then we have the nicotine confirmation peaks, the nicotine quantitation peaks, and the ones for quinoline as well. Right now, we are at 4.98 minutes. So if you see on the on the TIC, there's a peak coming out right now, and if you notice, it's confirming more for quinoline than nicotine. Even though their peaks are very similar, the their mass specs have some very similar m by z values, but you can notice very clearly that the first peak is quinoline because that's the one that's come out first, and it's confirming as well. Or oh, yeah, there are multiple peaks being overlaid, which is why we see it like a big noisy base. But we get a clear value over here. And now see, now we're going to get nicotine as well. So first came quinoline, and then comes nicotine. As clearly seen in our total line for now. So now we have confirmed both quinoline and nicotine. Once we are done with the run, we got to process our data. So we got to minimize the acquisition window. We got to open the qualitative analysis window to process our data. We choose our sample which we want to analyze. We got to go to chromatograms. extract chromatograms the first chromatogram we want to extract is the total ion chromatogram called TIC okay okay 
we'll see that we get two peaks, one for Prinoli and one for Nicotine. Now in order to see the spectra of Prinoline or Nicotine, we've got to double click on the Prinoline peak and we see the mass spectrum of Prinoline. If I double click, and it also gives us all the peak numbers and the abundance. If I click on Nicotine, I want to see the mass spectrum of Nicotine. Now in order to get only or isolate only quinoline or nicotine, I got to choose two special ions. So we call that selective ion monitoring. We go to extract chromatogram. Instead of TIC, we use SIM, selective ion monitoring. And we're going to select the 102 peak, which will only isolate quinoline. You notice we only got quinoline now. If I double click on that, I'll only get one peak over here for 102. Similarly, we're going to go back to chromatograms, extract chromatograms, selective ion monitoring, and choose 133, or the one closest to 133. Click OK. And now you notice we got nicotine. If I double click on that, I get only the nicotine peak. Now, in order to get the area, we've got to do manual integration. So let's manually integrate the quinoline peak first. Okay? I select that. I get that. I double click and we get the area coming here. So over here, for retention time 5.478, which was quinoline, my area of count is 20749. We're going to do the same thing for nicotine. We're going to integrate it. Double click. For the retention time 6.008 minutes, my area is 4817.81. So we're going to do this for each and every calibration point. We're going to get the area count for the quinoline and the nicotine. Once again, the quinoline is analyzed at 102 m by z. The nicotine at 133 m by z. And then we're going to use this to plot using the ratios of the two and the internal standard method for graphical analysis. And from there we can get the concentration of nicotine. Can I use it again?